Father, we ask that you would open your written word to us, that we may see the living word, namely Jesus. Amen. How lovely it is this morning to welcome Alexandra, Brooke, Fiona, Terry and Ian into the family of the church. We will hear God's promises of freedom and new life. And in response, the candidates will declare their intent to be disciples of Jesus. Their share in the inheritance of God's people will be effectively symbolized in the water of baptism. And we will greet them with the words, we welcome you into the fellowship of faith. Faith is a very significant word, not just in religion, but in wider life. We all need faith. We want to have faith in our political leaders, especially in times of uncertainty and hardship for many. Relationships in the workplace or community, in the intimacy of marriage, rely on faithfulness. Without faith, in a person or an institution, in a leader or a colleague, we may not have the confidence to give of ourselves for a cause or a person. In my military career, I regularly observed the importance of faith, whether in a safety expert in packing a parachute, a commander in giving in directions, or trusting the buddy next to you on a patrol. And in spiritual terms, the scriptures place faith on a pedestal along with hope and love as three virtues that endure. So what does it mean to join the fellowship of faith? Our readings today offer rich insight into the nature and the value of faith. And you may wish to have those open in front of you. Our first reading concerns a dialogue between the prophet Habakkuk and God. Writing probably as a contemporary of Jeremiah about 700 BC, when opposing empires were threatening the small states of Israel and Judah, Habakkuk has a troubled mind. He's struggling to have faith in God amidst all the violence and the destruction where the wicked prosper and justice is perverted. How long, O Lord, how long, he cries. It's a cry with which many in the world today will identify. How important is faith amidst seeming chaos? And in response, the Lord offers a promise of deliverance. Though the vision tarry, wait for it. It will surely come. In other words, God is not absent despite appearances to the contrary. He is engaged in the physical world that we inhabit today. He is omniscient and can redeem the darkest of situations. And so I wonder for you, how might you be able to see God at work, even in the most intractable of situations, both on a grand scale, but within your own lives? Faith recognizes the presence and the work of God. And Habakkuk also teaches us how we can respond. Look at the proud. Their spirit is not right within them, but the righteous will live by faith. To live by faith requires patience, wait for it, God said, and humility, not pride, but also an eye that watches and an ear that listens. Habakkuk says, I will keep watch to see what he will say to me. 
And faith then is nothing unless it translates into action. Write the vision, make it plain so that a runner may read it. There's a sense of dynamism in faith, of seizing the moment. And we have a bit of that today in people being baptized, seizing the moment, the opportunity. But it's also important through the week. And this is confirmed by our psalmist today, who declares, fret not, delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you your heart's desire. Commit your way to the Lord. Put your faith in him. So what might it mean for you to put your faith in God this week, to translate the words that we declare in the creed into the lives we live? It is this that constitutes a sincere faith that Paul sees in Timothy in our second reading. How lovely to have that reading today, which speaks of the potential of intergenerational faith. Paul saw that sincere faith first in Timothy's grandmother, Lois, then in his mother, Eudice, Eunice, and then down to Timothy himself. This level of faith may seem a tall order, and we do need to work at it day by day in fellowship with others. That's the fellowship of faith. But St. Paul offers this great comfort that faith comes first as a gift from God. Yes, we need to hold on to it securely, but as the last verse of that reading to Timothy says, we guard what is already entrusted to us with the help of the Holy Spirit within us. The Holy Spirit will continue the work of our baptism, forming us into the likeness of Jesus. And it's because of that that Paul can outline some of the wonderful benefits it transforms timidity into courage. It brings an exceptional form of love. The Greek word in this passage is agape, the self-giving divine love. And it gives us the will to exercise self-discipline, which we all need. Our first three readings then remind us of the nature and the value of faith. Faith in God who is so interested in our physical lives that his son lived among us. Faith that allows God's transforming work in us and through us. And faith that is fundamentally a gift of God to be received, guarded and nurtured. We need more faith. And so as we welcome Alexandra, Brooke, Fiona, Terry and Ian into our fellowship, let us sincerely pray as the disciples did, Lord, increase our faith. Amen.